Secretory IgA is an important marker and many people have low secretory IgA levels. I'm Dr. Eric Osansky and in this video I'll be discussing the significance of low and high secretory IgA levels, I will review some actual secretory IgA results, and I will then discuss what you can do to normalize your secretory IgA levels. Before I begin, I just want to remind you that the main reason I put together these videos is to help people with different types of autoimmune conditions and other health issues better understand their test results so that they can find or remove their triggers, correct any underlying imbalances, and feel great again. So let's start off by discussing what secretory IgA is. Secretory IgA lines the mucosal surfaces of the body, including the gastrointestinal tract, and it's the first line of defense against foreign invaders, including infections. Secretory IgA is produced by the B cells of the immune system, and it is specifically involved in immune exclusion, which refers to the ability of secretory IgA to prevent microbial pathogens and other antigens from gaining access to the intestinal epithelium. In other words, it offers protection against infections, food proteins, and other antigens. And just in case you don't know what an antigen is, it's simply a molecule that could stimulate an immune response. We'll look at some test results soon and we'll see examples of secretory IgA in the saliva and stool and someone can either have a normal secretory IgA, a low secretory IgA, or a high secretory IgA. A low secretory IgA can be a result of chronic stress and adrenal imbalances as well as low immune system function. And while secretory IgA isn't a specific marker for determining if someone has a leaky gut, a low secretory IgA is usually associated with a leaky gut, although it's important to understand that a normal secretory IgA does not rule out a leaky gut. So what does an elevated secretory IgA indicate? A high secretory IgA means that there is an elevated immune response, and it usually relates to an infection or sometimes a food sensitivity. So let's take a look at the reference range of secretory IgA, and we'll first look at the ranges of it in the saliva. These values are used by a company called Diagnostex, which is what I use for adrenal saliva testing in my practice. So we can see a borderline low reading is between 5 and 9 milligrams per deciliter, normal is between 10 and 20, borderline high is between 21 and 25, and of course elevated is greater than 25, optimal would be between 12 and 18 milligrams per deciliter. Now let's take a look at some reference ranges for fecal secretory IgA. A lot of different comprehensive stool panels test for secretory IgA, including the GI map by Diagnostic Solutions, which is the one I most commonly use in my practice. Genova Diagnostics is another excellent company that offers comprehensive stool panel, and they also test for secretory IgA. So according to the GI map, normal should be between 510 and 2010 micrograms per gram, optimal between 750 and 1750. So let's go ahead and take a look at some test results. So here we see a report from the company Diagnostics. This is in the saliva. That's why it says total salivary SIGA. That's the same thing as secretory IgA. And we see that this is 16, which is normal, normal between 10 and 20, and also optimal according to the reference ranges I gave earlier. And so this total salivary SIGA or secretory IgA is borderline low at five. And this one is also borderline low at 8. And this one over here, we could see it's less than 5. So this is obviously low. And this one is 31, which is clearly elevated. And secretory IgA, this is on the GI map, comprehensive stool panel. So 173 is low according to this test. And 531, this is within range, but it's on the lower side, so it's less than the optimal range I gave earlier. So how do you normalize secretory IgA if it is out of balance? If it's low, you definitely want to do a good job of managing stress, and if possible, reduce stressors, and you might need to support the adrenals in other ways, such as through supplementation. I created a separate video you might want to check out entitled Understanding Different Cortisol Patterns, which also includes treatment suggestions, and I'll include the link to this video in the description below. In order to heal the gut, you want to incorporate the 5R protocol, which I discussed in other videos, but this involves removing the factor which is causing a leaky gut or gut dysbiosis, and the other components are to replace things such as digestive enzymes or low stomach acid, re-inoculate with pre and probiotic foods and supplements, do things to repair the gut, and overall rebalance the body. 
Supplementation isn't always necessary to balance secretory IgA, but some of the natural agents that have been shown to help with low secretory IgA include zinc, selenium, vitamin A, and Saccharomyces boulardii. Since a leaky gut is common with a low secretory IgA, you might want to consider gut healing foods or supplements, such as L-glutamine and bone broth. And if you have an elevated secretory IgA, then you want to eliminate any infections or food sensitivities that might be present. If you'd like to learn how to test for gut infections, which can be a factor in a low or high secretory IgA, then please check out my GI map overview video where I discuss some of the different viral, bacterial, and parasitic infections along with some other important markers. And if you like this video, please click on the like button below and I'll catch you on the next video.